when the two were born. They did everything on time, crawled, walked, rolled over. Everything was pretty much almost a week apart between the two. I can't even tell you when he really went downhill. All of a sudden it just seemed like Jack just was miserable. And that's what's hard. Your child is, you know, developing right along and all of a sudden they just kind of go down. On the paper. Can you color? Jack is three years old. He loves to color, which is a new thing that he's just gotten into. He's starting to clap, which he never did before, and stomp his feet once in a while. There are certain songs that he really loves. If you're happy and you know it, then your face will surely show it. If you're happy and you know it, clap your hands. When Jack was little, we couldn't even get him to sit. He would just run off and be crying. He didn't want to sit and do anything didn't play with toys appropriately. And now, if you give him a reinforcer, like his shaker, he'll sit. In my immediate family is my husband, Sean, and we have a six-year-old, Max. My oldest son, Max, is on the autism spectrum as well. And then Jack has a twin sister, Josie. No, you're not all Yay! done. Where he's at now is he loves school. For him to take the numbers one through 10, and they can be mixed up and he can line them up. A year ago, I wouldn't have thought he could do that. Good for you. Ten. Jack is a kindergartner here at Northeast Elementary School, and he's in the general classroom, I would say about 80% of his day. And then he comes in here for a lot of intense one-on-one -on -one work with his goals right now. Jack right now is nonverbal. That's how I would classify him. He does have some words, but he's not using them to communicate so much as he's using them just to identify certain things around the room. Pig, 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 pig. Jack's strengths right now in the classroom are his letters and numbers. He's really just fascinated by letters and numbers. It seems to be a characteristic of children with autism that they do like numbers because the order of numbers is never going to change. He is using a piece of assistive technology right now. He's had it for about four weeks. If you want a drink, tell me drink. Drink, please, and thank you. Good job, Jack. One of the biggest things that I would like to see for Jack is for him to have a way to communicate. Right now, he's not able to let us know, I'm hurt, or I'm sick, or I'm hungry, or I'm grumpy right now, just leave me alone. He doesn't have a way to say those things. Jack has a one-on-one -on -one associate, which he needs because of the fact that he could run off at any point if somebody wasn't watching him. And still, mm -hmm. he's not completely potty trained, so he needs help with that. Potty training is <laughs> like my next goal that I would love to have done. That's you! Keep working on the speech. I've heard him say words. He said words at school, so I know he can speak. It's just getting it out of him. He's just a, a happier child, and the earlier you can start doing intervention, the better. That's been huge for Jack. When we started, I thought, oh, his goal was to get him to sit for 10 minutes without crying or running off. And then today you see him, and he'll sit and do work. Safety is the biggest thing, especially for a child like Jack. And that's why we do swimming lessons, because we want to make sure that he's able, if he gets in a pool or gets into a pond or something, that he can get up and get back to the side, like if he fell off a dock or something, because that was my biggest fear. I have had Jack on my roster for the last year and a half. When I first got him as an eighth grader, he was displaying some more negative behaviors, whereas he was maybe having some self-injurious behaviors. Dad. If he got upset, he would Dad. maybe hit his head a little bit. He had, we called them vocal aggressions. You're okay. hey. Sometimes he would leave the area where he was supposed to be because something else was bothering him or he wanted to just get out of work. Jack, over here. Get your tray. <coughs> it's okay. Get your tray. What animal? Yeah. 
You say it. Pig. Pig. We're working on him communicating more. So rather than the behaviors being the form of communication, we're having him use his augmentative alternative communication device to say what might be bothering him or ask for a break. I would describe him as low verbal. So he has the ability to speak and we hear that often in little snippets or short little phrases or one word answers. Rabbit. Bit. Rabbit. Good trying, Good. Jack. But when it comes to having a conversation, that's something at this point in time, he still has a little bit of a wall in front of him that we need to help him jump over. Hands down. Nice hands. Mm -hmm. One of the things that Jack does communicatively is he reverses his sounds or he'll put an initial sound at the end of a word. So saying fish is very hard for Jack. It sounds like shish shish because he's not sure about exactly oh. where to have proper mouth placement. Fish. Yes, there it was. You got your sounds. Good job, Jack. Hope. Ooh, you forgot a Can. word. Can. I would say Jack's you. area of strength oh. is doing work tasks that are very repetitive, that have a clear answer. One, four. Fourteen. High five, good job. Sixty-three, high five, good job. He needs to know, here's how I start it, here's exactly how I do it, and here's how I end it. You do see that no matter what abilities or disabilities the students have, they are teenagers, you know, so they're going to have the same feelings that a neurotypical student might have. Jack also sometimes struggles with understanding social cues from other people. One of the biggest challenges is he has feelings that he doesn't know how to appropriately display and communicate with us. So we're trying to help him navigate when you're frustrated, this is what you could do. We also really hit up the living component where we're working on hygiene or um, living skills. And one of the big living skills for Jack is making his lunch. So we're trying to help him understand it's your lunch. You need to be the one that makes it. Because as an adult, if he's hungry, I want him someday to be able to go to the kitchen and do it on his own. It's scary at times to think about that but it's a skill that he needed to have last year. Where was this child as a three-year-old, as a seven-year-old, as an eighth grader? Left, gone, eight. Everything that we do and all of the goals from here on out are very much aligned to what does Jack hope for himself in the future? What do parents hope for him in the future? and how can we meld those into applicable goals that will make a difference for him for the rest of his life. Probably down the road when he's 18, 19, 20, if he's still, you know, where he needs full-time care, what do you, I mean, what do you do? Is there places that he can live, that he can have help, where he can go out and get a job and come back and live somewhat independently? That's probably the biggest goal and the biggest fear. This program is part of the Move to Include initiative, made possible with support from the Corporation for Public Broadcasting, a private corporation funded by the American people. The Max and Helen Guernsey Charitable Foundation, in support of educational programming on statewide Iowa Public Television.